<laughs> okay. So let's talk about Canada. I'd love to chat with you about Canada. Tell me about the town we're in after we went to Toronto, the contrast of, is it Bowmanville? Well, Bowmanville's where the racetrack is. We couldn't get a hotel room there because all the Super 8s were sold out. So we stayed in Oshawa. Oh yeah, that's right. Which as I failed to remember is like one of GM's main factories was there, but it didn't seem super active. And it was a stark difference from our fancy mm -hmm. spot in Toronto. Yes. <laughs> Want me to go a little further on Simcoe Street or whatever it was? Because we've not sure. really. There's the deli with the dark front door. That's an icon haircut. It's just different, and they have strange words for things. Like the restaurants are like, a lot of them have like American looking signs and names, but then they're just different. They're just like a little different. Like instead, like of, instead Applebee's, of Little Caesars, it's Pizza Pizza, yeah. which is the slogan. Exactly. For Little Caesars, but it's just, I mean, it's everything is very clean and nice for the most part. It's just very subdued. Everything is subdued Sub compared to America, I feel like. Don't you think? Don't you know? Um, it's very multicultural here, too, I feel like. I oh, wow. Feel a little sad now that I think about it that I didn't get some pancakes with some authentic maple syrup. It to me. It's three slices of pea meal bacon, which we've learned is thick bacon rolled in cornmeal. Three sausages, three thick slices of ham, three strips of maple bacon because you didn't have enough bacon in the other. A large mound of famous home fries. Oh, it's just meat and potatoes. There you go. Um, yours looks healthier than mine. I'm not sure what this whole pea meal. That's bacon <laughs> of some sort. So, I'll give that a whirl, see how it goes. Oh, wow. I might not be uh, staying 80.5 kilograms for a long <laughs> Our hotel was interesting. It had a, you had a pancake experience at the hotel. Oh yeah, and you know, race crew guys don't take this wrong, but if a race crew member won't eat something, it's pretty bad. <laughs> so there was like a pancake machine, like fully automated, like you pushed a button, it squirted the dough, it went through the thing and it came out the end. But I was standing there with one of the Ferrari mechanics and like as it was coming out, he was like, no, nah, I'm not eating that. It was like shooting like charcoal out the end with some pieces of pancake. Mm. And um, was, yeah, so. I'm glad I wasn't there for that one. Yeah, it was different than the, uh, than the Four Seasons. Mm -hmm. We had some apparent stalactites in our garage. Well, lots of garage. Uh, parking garages, if they're trying to be authentic and cave-like, have stalactites, and this one was on point with the formations. <laughs> I've also never been in a hotel where there was like a sign in your room that, I over exaggerate sometimes, so you'll have to correct me, but didn't it say like, if you hear knocking, don't open the door, you might get stabbed? <laughs> it, was, it was a list of like 15 things to not do, basically, to stay safe in the hotel. But we ultimately did stay or safe. To do. Yeah. We didn't eat any pancakes. No. We saw cool stalactites mm -hmm. and didn't get stabbed. So I think it was a pretty decent uh, 
hoteling experience. Remember the conversation we had on the way from Toronto to the track about Fast Life and what we were doing with it and what was happening with the distributor and all the stuff with the racing? Like, what kind of mindset were you in? Of course I remember it because it's like most of our conversation right now is we're just trying to figure out where to go with all this, how much heart and soul to keep putting into it, and it feels like every time we think about pulling back the throttles, we get some really encouraging message, or we meet somebody at the race that says, this has totally changed my path, and I think we're on the right track, and I, I think there's no problem with being on multiple platforms. We've got you know, the stuff that you succeeded getting on the Amazon Prime, and it's living there and thriving, and we're making this little switch to YouTube so we can keep putting new stuff up, and it's awesome to have you back at the races. Downfall with only an 80 second lap, there's going to be much of a gap for me by the time you, uh, you wait for the pack to get. Copy from that from Kevin, we will go on the green. This was my first race back after being sick too, so I was kind of trying to pace myself, but of course I couldn't help myself but run the camera. Hey, yeah, fast life here now. Yeah, I've had my wife yet. Have you? Hi, I'll David. shake your. <laughs> that wasn't a very good. I'll do that again in a minute. Yeah. And I'm Larry, I'm the transport driver. Hi, okay, nice to meet you. So I followed you through practice, qualifying. I was on the track walk with you. I was highly concerned about the condition of the track before Derek went out on the track. As any then, loving wife would be. Yes. And then I went with Spencer in the car for the practice session and he and I had some nice conversation. He educated me about the corners and the different things in the track and what was happening with Derek and that was pretty cool. Gotcha. Okay, this is Spencer's tour of the track. Well, we can see from the car, which is limited, but still, still pretty cool. These setups are quite amazing. Do you think most of these people are here to see the NASCAR? <laughs> I think they're here for everything. I okay. think they enjoy racing in general. I think the NASCAR is a big draw. I think the sports cars are as well. I think you bring them both and you get, uh, get a decent crowd. Nice. Okay. Hey, here we are. So who comes to this race? Well, lots of Canadians. Like a, like this will fill in? Yeah, this is, this is Thursday. There's nothing really on track officially uh, today yet. The place is still pretty full in some of the best spots over here. Wow. And then I think come race weekend, especially if the weather's mm -hmm. good, which right now it's a little chilly. It looks a little iffy. But I guess that's just normal little... for Canada, right? Yeah. Um, this whole place will be packed. And what do you need to know about this track as a driver? Well, it's old school. It was built in the probably late 50s, early 60s. Another mm -hmm. Canadian Grand Prix was here for a couple of years through the 60s and 70s. It's old school, it's fast. There's, you know, modern racetracks typically have, you know, lots of slow corners with maybe one token fast one. This is the opposite. It's all fast with one token slow corner. Okay. And it's of the old style, you know, it, it's from an era back when it was okay for race cars to go fast. And it's a ton of fun to drive. But it was okay for race cars to go fast. Yeah, that's... What, what has always raced here? Or um, You said NASCAR is coming this weekend. But... Yeah, they, there's typically a NASCAR around here every year. Uh, ALMS used to race here. Um, IMSA will be back here. They will. And okay. they ran uh, Formula One you know, for, for a long That's time. That's what I was wondering. Formula yeah, one. they used to do every other year. The F1 Grand Prix would be here and then in uh, Montremblant. It kind of swap years. Oh. And then now it's in Quebec. Interesting. Sorry, Montreal. But... Uh, yeah, it's this exact same layout as it used to be too. Wow, Formula One was here and not IndyCar though. I would be surprised if IndyCar didn't race here at some point. I just don't, I'm not 100% sure. Gotcha. There he is, he's clean too. Green flag for GP3 practice. Green flag for GP3. Checker flag on the bronze only practice. Checker flag, bronze only. Green sector two. Green pit speed or speed trap. Copy. Good job, boss. Last lap. Good job. But we knew he did his fastest lap. Uh, kind of got stuck in the traffic here at the end. I couldn't get a flyer. Actually, you jumped up immediately as soon as you got the free crash. Good. 
27-3. So that puts him 16th overall. As the checker comes out. Oh, no, not bad. What was that? It's okay. I didn't feel very fast, but I only had like five four minutes laps or something, and I was in traffic. So. It seemed like five minutes. Yeah, it was very fast. Like, as soon as you were in the car and had done like two laps, they're like, five more minutes of practice. Yeah. Um, I, I know where we're at, though, and we're good. I'll be, I'll be fast tomorrow. Spencer showed me the whole track and oh, nice. talked to me about like elevation change and blind spots, and it was cool. So maybe you'll go on our track walk with us. When is that? Do you want to? It's at six. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you might want to eat something. Do you actually walk? Um, we'll probably take a golf cart. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. There's a whole field of cars on the track. Sir? Ron. Yeah. Can we take this out in the truck, the truck walk, or? Uh, we get funky about that? I think you'll probably get funky about that. Okay. Yeah, walk means walk. Okay. It doesn't always mean walk, but I guess here no, it does. Yeah. Uh, Walking in the pouring rain. I think it's going to start raining pretty hard. Like Toronto style. I can't just take it. Take well, it yeah, because Spencer doesn't even have a raincoat on. Neither does Sean. Snow. I have it on my head. It is not snow. It's not snow. This is like a beautiful Canadian day. <laughs> right? Radar doesn't show. Okay. Do you want to take this? <laughs> take the key to the car. Yeah. Okay. You think I'm not coming? She's coming? Oh, you're coming? I'm kind of tough, you know. Yeah. Okay, let's roll. Let's make it a fast walk. <laughs> I'll take the key. And I have Sean's coat if it really does start to pour for somebody. If you're going to say anything funny, let me know and I'll get the camera going. I can't tell when funny stuff is going to shoot out of my mouth. Kind of Are you sure we're even authorized to do this? I steal other people yeah, out there. So, yeah, so you, you, know, you guys know what's going to happen, right? We're going to get about to turn two and someone in the golf cart is going to come by. Totally. Yeah. I was half thinking we could have just throw out on it. Yeah, yeah, I just like to do that. I, that's what I used to do. It's a, it's a fast corner, and if you're carrying good speed in, and you're late to power because you're going fast, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. If you over if you slow down and you're late to power, that's different. Right. But if I can't touch the gas here because I've carried so much speed across the apex, I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah. Speed is speed. So I as soon as my hands start to open and I feel like I can add it in, I do. Um, but that usually happens around here. Usually it's kind of half uh, time to commit and uh, understand that as soon as you get off this path, you're gonna lose some pressure. I don't know how bad that was today. Uh, I, okay. was I don't think, think we're going bad. Yeah, exactly. Well, you can tell the grip though, right? Yeah. And it, Did it feel a ton better on? No. No? Okay. No. My guess is that every year we come back here, it's going to season Start a little more. Yeah, it's going to become mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Kind of like Niagara Falls. Yeah. How it's eating itself? Yeah. How much does it move every year? One meter. One meter, one meter a year. Yeah. Still 100 years, 100 years, 100 years. That's what they say. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me. It's like my steady cam. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Moonwalk, baby. <laughs> I know I wasn't going fast enough there because I never even needed this. Yeah. I, I didn't. Need this. <laughs> we're, we're halfway there. <laughs> Personal Please assistant. All the cool people are. All the cool people are coming up here. Come on. <laughs> We're all a little bit superstitious. We can't help it. Derek. Now's a good time. <laughs> I'll tell you what, on the checker lab, I'm going to come see you guys. I like it. Good plan. Yeah, yourself yeah. having a beer with your tiny trailer. Derek, are you allowed to ride bikes on the track? Randomly? That guy seems to. Going the wrong way, too. How was it for you during practice and qualifying? 
Um, it's a track that I've learned to love for sure. I had the luxury of having been there before. Sean hadn't. And it was a very important race weekend for our East Coast Championship, leading in points and just not really knowing what we were going to have, you know, balance of performance wise when we got there. Um, so I really had it on me to be as fast as I could and to do everything I could to get Sean up to speed somewhere that he had never been. <laughs> So Sean ran his best lap that he's run, he's doing well. I feel like I need to get into like the 25 to feel like I did a good job. But uh, this is a mix of pros and amps, so the classes are all mixed up. Sean's fourth in our class right now. Turns out that balance of performance was still quite a ways off. We felt that it was off even leaving Virginia for these long straightaway fast tracks. They're just not things that favor the Porsche and we had felt like we should get some advantage coming our way that we didn't really have. So we started to get really realistic. It turned into a weekend that, like I said, we both needed to be at the top of our game, but also realized we probably didn't have a car that we could win or even get second place in because the BMWs and the Mercedes were just so fast there in a straight line. So it was really just about getting as many points as we could and that's what we ended up doing. We executed really well. During the race, I always kind of wonder what's happening. I don't always have all the information, but I stay in pit lane so that I can have as much as possible. And I guess I didn't know that per se. I mean, I knew that you were struggling a little bit because in qualifying you spun. Yeah, which is rare for me. Um, I was just trying to get every little bit out of the car that I could. And you know, that's an area where you can just roll a little bit more speed and, and see a few tenths shave off your lap time. And, you know, like especially for Sean at a track like this, you know, if you haven't been there, finding that final half a second or even three tenths is so difficult to do. And you just have to push everywhere. And I pushed a little bit too hard and I used up one of my nine lives. And then during the race, Sean was in first and the car was like in last place or something. Yeah, Sean. And I was just like, oh my God, oh my God. And I felt bad for Sean because I knew he was trying to learn the track. So it, it was, really wasn't like, necessarily even a driver issue, though I think he was learning. And then I just think the car wasn't what you guys had hoped it would be. Well, it's hard to have confidence when you're off the pace. And that's true if it's you as a driver, or a problem with the car, or an imbalance within the balance of performance and rules for that weekend. So we had several of those things working against us. You know, Sean started race one on a track that he had never been to and in a car that wasn't favored that weekend balance of performance wise. So Sean had dropped you know, a ways back and I think we were all the way in last place when the car was handed over to me. We've been really great strategy wise within the team and with our pit stops and we nailed that and was able to work our way back up and salvage a podium finish in third place. So I feel like that was about the maximum result that we could have expected for race one. So I had to push really hard to get the high 26s or low 27s, like where it could be a mistake or like dropping off the curb and the tires were starting to feel like the right front was like, I'm really curious what it looks like. I might have just picked up some jumps, but that last lap I was like, if I need like a 29 to still keep behind me, that'd be fine. <laughs> so as always, very helpful information. So race two was kind of similar. It was a total nail biter for me and getting to start the race, my expectation on myself was to go put in 110% performance and see how far ahead I could hopefully get the car and then execute a good driver change and pit stop. And that's really exactly what happened. I had a good start, had a really good stint in the car. We elongated the time that I was in the car as long as we could, just knowing that Sean who was really great at getting up to speed, just wasn't there yet at this track. I mean, literally, it was his first weekend ever even seeing the place. Uh, so we got a really nice handy lead and uh, put Sean in the car, and he was able to just go keep it clean and drive a really good stint. Ended up dropping to third place, and again, 
you know, really maximize points because I just I don't think we had a car with BOP that we could win or get second place. We were the first of the Porsches and that was the best that we could do. Yeah, it was good. And, and then after Canada, we were looking ahead to Sonoma and we have a potential um, intern and helper for Fast Life maybe coming on board. And so some exciting possibilities. Um, I've been praying and asking for help for quite a long time and not knowing how to get that, so. And a few races in a row that BOP has been off and finally a track that should favor the Porsche, so. Yeah. I'm excited. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Same. Thank you for following Fast Life TV. Please subscribe for weekly updates about our new content and share us with your friends.